tend to be lighter in color. Another reporter. Let's say you're in an earthquake of, of 6.5 or 7. You're going to be very aroused. And days, weeks later, if someone were to come up behind you and clap their hands really loud, you'd jump. And that's because you're, you'd be sensitized, all right? And so uh, that's the type of learning that we studied. So to sensitize a snail, we gave them a series of electrical shocks. And following the delivery of those electrical shocks, if you touch the animal on a specific part of its skin, it'll have a contraction. It'll contract very strongly. Whereas the same tap, depending on the strength, would, before the shocks, produce just a very modest contraction or maybe no contraction at all. And this, is, this reverses its learning. We trained a group of snails by giving them electrical shocks. We tested them to make sure that they were sensitized. We tested their reflexes to see that they were sensitized. And then we dissected out their nervous systems and extracted the RNA from those nervous systems. We purified the RNA. Then we dissolved it in solution and injected it into naive snails, snails that had not received the electrical shocks. And then 24 hours later, we tested the reflexes of those snails, and we found that they were enhanced, just like the snails that got the electrical shocks. There's the segment. OK, that's the contraction. We did a control, of course. And the control was we took a group of snails that had, had not gotten the electrical shocks, we took the RNA out of their nervous systems, we dissected it into yet another, we, excuse me, we injected it into yet another group of untrained snails, and they didn't show the reflex enhancement. So that meant that it wasn't, this reflex enhancement wasn't the result of some, you know, it being injected or some nonspecific. Okay, so there's the siphon. Okay, now, the first time it gets, it gets a contraction, it may last a certain amount of time. But as you give it more tests, then that will gradually the, go away. And that's the habituation. Your brain is made up of neurons. And those are the cell, main cell body type in your brain. And uh, well, at least that's the part that um, stores the information. And um, those uh, cells, neurons, are connected with each other. And those connections are known as synapses. So s the synapse is where the electrical impulse goes from one neuron to the next. So that's a synapse. And we wait until the siphon comes back out. And that's an indication of um, the, the, we give them lettuce and they do all right with that. The current main uh, model of how uh, of the biology of memory is that when an animal learns something, there are there's uh, changes in the strength of synaptic connections. Some there are new connections that grow. Some get stronger. Some get weaker. And the idea is that the memory is stored as uh, in those synapses as a synaptic rearrangement. And experiments that we had done over the last five years suggested uh, to me that that probably was wrong. You know, you, if you spend enough time with them, you really, you really see why, they're, why they've survived all these years so successfully. You know, I've been working on how synapses reorganize during learning for 35 years. And it was only recently that I became dissatisfied with that hypothesis. And it was based on other research that we've been doing. And um, so that, that led me to this experiment. Touch the siphon, OK? So I'm going to come down here. There's the siphon. And I'm going to touch it. OK, now there's the contraction, OK? There are two broader uh, significances. Um, first of all, we're not going to be able to transfer memories that most people think of as memories 
between humans anytime soon. So our study doesn't imply that that's possible. Okay, but what it, there are two things that it does imply. The first, from a scientific viewpoint, is that if we're right, it, it really strongly suggests that the dominant model of how memories are stored in neuroscience is incorrect, and we have to rethink it. So that's, to me, that's very exciting. But I think there's another uh, more practical aspect of these studies that, that are intriguing, and that is that, again, if we're right, then it could lead for new treatments for a variety of uh, disorders of the brain. So it could lead to treatments for um, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and conversely, it could lead to more effective treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder, trauma. But that's okay. I'm, I'm old. All right. So look, this is, I want you to see this because it's just so cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see.